takes the um, suggestion from neoadjuvant and smaller, less definitive trials of dual blockade being, you know, really a, a market advance over over single HER2 blockade. Um, and of course, the challenges for Dr. Basoga and his colleagues will include figuring out who needs both of the drugs and um, and uh, uh, who doesn't need chemotherapy. So our next presentation uh, is. Uh, and the exemestane plus everolimus increasing progression-free survival for women with metastatic breast cancer. This is by Dr. Gabriel Portabaji, uh, professor of medicine and chair of the Department of Breast Medical Oncology, director of the multidisciplinary breast cancer research program at University of Texas MD Anderson. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to share this early morning with you and present the results on behalf of my co-investigators and the several hundred patients who participated in this. Uh, my disclosures on this slide. So um, endocrine therapy is, or hormonal therapy, is the treatment of choice for the majority of patients with metastatic breast cancer whose tumors express the estrogen receptor. This represents about three quarters of postmenopausal women or women over the age of 50. And our standard practice is to use the multiple uh, endocrine regimens in sequence uh, in order to get the maximum mileage out of all of our endocrine treatments. On this uh, cartoon, I show you um, what has been proposed as one of several mechanisms of resistance to endocrine therapy. Because in the metastatic setting, the sad truth is that after a number of months of successful control of tumor growth with one endocrine agent, uh, tumor cells become smarter, they develop uh, resistance to that agent, and then we need to change to something else. Now, uh, this is, is shows a, a cross-section of a cancer cell. And what you see in, um, uh, on the outside of, of the membrane is a number of, um, of growth factors. The GFR, HER2, as you heard from my colleague earlier, the GFR, the, the insulin-like growth factor receptor, et cetera. And uh, while the estrogen receptor um, binds uh, um, estrogen and, and activate a number of, uh, of cellular uh, activities um, in the nucleus, these growth factors can activate the estrogen receptor in the absence of the natural ligand, which is estrogen, by activating um, some of these intermediate nodules, uh, the TI3 kinase, AKT, mTOR pathway. This uh, pathway seems to be central to a number of functions of the cell and can be activated through multiple sources. So the hypothesis arose upon learning this that uh, inhibiting uh, either PI3 kinase or mTOR might be a good strategy for uh, overcoming resistance to endocrine therapy. And in fact, there is a lot of preclinical data to suggest that mTOR activation is a common uh, mechanism of uh, uh, hormonal resistance. The, my co-investigator, uh, Dr. Baselga, generated some um, earlier data in a smaller phase two neoadjuvant trial in which uh, postmenopausal <coughs> with hormone receptor positive early breast cancer were randomly assigned to treatment with neoadjuvant letrozole and placebo or letrozole plus everolimus. <coughs> Um, and then um, at uh, the time of surgery, the response to this in these interventions was assessed. And as shown at the bottom of this slide, the combination showed an increased response rate, which was uh, um, a, a, an important trend, and a significant antiproliferative response as uh, determined by a diminution or a reduction in P67, which is a marker of proliferation in breast cancer and other cancers. A second uh, earlier trial was a randomized phase two in which tamoxifen was the endocrine uh, therapy. This was in postmenopausal women with uh, 
hormone receptor positive advanced breast cancer. And as these curves show, uh, while it was a small phase two study with about 100 patients, <coughs> this also showed a significant prolongation of time to progression and overall survival. So based on a solid scientific hypothesis and some preliminary preclinical and clinical data, we then developed the Bolero 2 uh, strategy. This uh, protocol was uh, intended to be a phase three randomized trial to assess the uh, contribution of Everolimus to endocrine therapy in patients with, who were postmenopausal, had ER positive disease, and had progressed on a prior aromatase inhibitor. Uh, so um, this was a 2 to 1 randomization. We see the doses of both Everolimus and Exemestane on the respective boxes. Uh, the primary endpoint of the study was uh, progression-free survival as determined by the local treating investigator, although we also had an independent uh, uh, radiology review performed centrally. And secondarily, we looked at overall survival, response rate, quality of life, and of course safety and a variety of correlative uh, markers. So the protocol was designed to detect a, a statistically a hazard ratio of 0.74, that is to say a 26% reduction in progression events with 90% power. And for that, it required uh, initially 528 progression events with interim analysis after the first 359. Uh, of that interim analysis, the progression-free survival that actually crossed the boundaries uh, that were mentioned by Dr. Baselga earlier for the Cleopatra study. So uh, that means that uh, the, uh, the differences were greater than uh, we initially projected, and the, the study was, became uh, a positive study earlier than projected. Uh, the cutoff date for the update I'm going to present to you was July 8th, and at that time the median follow-up was 12 and a half months, and we had reached 457 PFS events. These are the basic characteristics. Uh, uh, since the eligibility required patients to be postmenopausal, the median age is about 10 years older than uh, those patients in, the, in Dr. Baselga's uh, uh, earlier study. Um, the majority were Caucasian, um, about 60% had excellent performance status, and about a third each had liver and or lung involvement. About 70% had measurable disease, the rest being patients with uh, predominantly bone metastasis, uh, which are not considered strictly measurable. The study was performed uh, internationally in 34 countries over five continents, so it actually reflects a variety of ethnic groups in addition to what you see in, in North America and Western Europe. Uh, about 80% of patients had demonstrated sensitivity to previous hormonal therapy. I remind you again that all of them had received and had progressed on an aromatase inhibitor, namely letrozole or anastrozole. Um, I also call your attention that uh, in addition to that, 50% had received prior tamoxifen, about 15% had received prior fulvestrant, 25% had received prior chemotherapy for metastatic breast cancer in addition to what they have, may have received in the adjuvant setting, and more than half had received more than three prior therapies in the metastatic setting. So this is a more heavily pretreated population than what you saw in the previous study. Uh, perhaps that was a, an excellent choice because since we are pursuing a mechanism of resistance, this is clearly a population where resistance has uh, set in. So uh, again, this is a 2 to 1 randomization. Discontinuations occurred with greater frequency in the exemestane alone arm or the placebo arm and most of the discontinuations in both arm, arms uh, occurred because of disease progression. Uh, very few patients discontinued due to adverse events. 
This is the primary efficacy va variable, uh, and it demonstrates not the projected 26% reduction in events, but a 56% reduction in events, a hazard ratio of 0.44, and a p-value for which I don't have enough fingers to count. Uh, the median progression-free survival went from uh, 3.2 months to 7.4 months in the local investigator's assessment. And as you can tell, these curves continue to diverge with time. Now again, we, we are at an early stage with a median follow-up of 12 and a half months. So uh, as we approach maturity, um, we will be more certain of, uh, of these results. This is the central uh, imaging review. This was equally positive with a hazard ratio of 0.36 and again a highly significant p-value. Uh, minor differences in the median progression-free uh, survival results. So you have to realize that the local investigator has more information at his hands because he's seeing the patient. The central reviewers have a set of x-rays and they have to judge on that basis. So uh, it is uh, uh, not infrequent to have these minor variations between the local and the central review. The forest plot here shows the internal consistency of these results with uh, benefit as shown on all subsets of patients we analyzed. Uh, so this is uh, clearly an effective intervention in this group of postmenopausal hormone resistant patients. The response rates and clinical benefit rates also favored significantly the combination arm with about 50% of patients who um, had received prior endocrine therapy benefiting from this combination. Uh, the overall survival results are early. Uh, remember that the median survival of postmenopausal patients with hormone receptor positive breast cancer ranged somewhere between two and a half and four years. <coughs> Here are the 12.5 month follow up, so it will take us probably another year, a year and a half of follow up until the survival figures mature. Uh, I can tell you that at the, um, at the interim analysis, there were more deaths in the placebo arm than in the Everolimus arm, but those differences are not significant for the same reasons as Dr. Baselga mentioned in the previous study. Um, we, the, the final analysis will occur after 392 deaths will have occurred. Uh, common side effects, and I'd like you to concentrate on the grade three and grade four. The, the commonest one were stomatitis or oral mucositis which was seen with greater frequency in the combination arm than in the single agent arm. And rash and fatigue, uh, which are uh, commonly seen and known to occur with this agent, diarrhea. Um, uh, others that are not listed here because they occur with less than 20% frequency included non-infectious pneumonitis, uh, hyperglycemia, which is an effect of inhibiting mTOR in general, um, and uh, um, anemia, and uh, um, uh, those are uh, uh, some of the uh, common and expected toxicities. Uh, we looked at quality of life, and uh, the yellow line um, corresponds to the combination. So despite the list of side effects you saw in the previous slide, the quality of life of these patients was not affected any more than uh, what hexamestane alone would cause. Um, uh, the p-value is 0.03, but we consider these uh, curves to be superimposable. Interesting observations. Um, as you know, aromatase inhibitors result in marked reduction in estrogens, and uh, estrogen deprivation leads to loss in bone density in its most extreme a form that leads to pathological fractures, osteoporosis, etc. In the blue lines and the blue bars on this slide, you see an increase in bone resorption markers in the group of patients treated with hexamestane alone. That is a known and expected effect of all of aromatase inhibitors. In the yellow bars, it is the combination. 
So actually the combination not only does not, does not make uh, bone resorption worse, but it decreases uh, bone resorption and bone formation markers. So this might be actually a positive one. I don't know that we will want this as treatment for osteoporosis, but, uh, but certainly it is reassuring that it does not aggravate that problem. Clinical pharmacology was reassuring. The only change we saw was that heterolimus increased the serum concentrations of hexamethane, but this increase does not result in any significant uh, side effects or changes in estrogen levels. Uh, so, in summary, the addition of everolimus to hexamethane clearly and significantly prolonged progression-free survival in this group of patients with uh, ER-positive HER2-negative breast cancer that were refractory to previous non-steroidal aromatase inhibitors and other endocrine interventions with about a four-month prolongation of PFS and a 56% uh, reduction in progression events and the benefit was observed <coughs> in all subgroups. The time to deterioration of quality of life was similar in the two arms. Bone resorption formation markers uh, increased in the hexamethane arm, but decreased in the combination arm, and adverse events were consistent with previously described adverse events with everolimus. So it, uh, we believe that these results underline the fact that everolimus is the first agent to significantly enhance the efficacy of another of a hormonal therapy in patients with ER positive HER2 negative breast cancer, and that this combination in advanced breast cancer might represent a change in practice or paradigm shift in the management of this population. Uh, these are the countries that contributed to um, this study, mostly uh, Europe and North America, but other countries too. And of course, my thanks to all participants in this trial. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. And I think, uh, you know, this is, you're seeing the advent of a new form of targeted therapy uh, in this ER positive. Uh, uh, group and I think uh, this is a you'll be seeing more of, of this approach um